No, give him the mic, give him, I can't hear it properly. The charts are long term. So what actually you are saying is like emphasis is going up right now. Yeah. But this is uh, what we are saying on the risk of a very long term chart. Okay. Whereas our trading period is not even a month or a two months. Okay. So I guess forming a view upon long term view will not be a good perspective. Forming mm -hmm. a view on a shorter view, uh, like shorter time period will be a better perspective. Okay, I, so I'll, I'll respond in two parts. One is that uh, as a basic uh, uh, proposition, your statement is correct that I'm, decide, I'm teaching you how to uh, approach the market based on long term charts. Okay, but your trading project has a very short time horizon. Okay, so that's a fair point. Uh, but the second aspect of the of the response to that is that the long term charts. The reason I was looking at the long term charts is they give you the picture of the long term trend. Okay, and even in your short term trading uh, horizon, okay, you are still <clears throat> because if the long term trend is up, do you realize that even the short term trends have more chances of going up than going down? Because that's how every long term trend is also based on a, a series of short term trends. Can you see that? That even this long term trend, what is this? Basically, this is just uh, adding up a bunch of uh, short term trends, like a month is based on a month on a number of days. Okay. So, therefore, if a month is going to be very bullish, then, or if we're going to have very heavy rainfall in the month of July, then on every day in July, there's a much higher chance of rain than there isn't, uh, uh, than of uh, no rain, right? So, it, it, it goes both ways. You're partly right, so it is a little difficult. But in general, you're still better off trading with the short term trend. So, even if you look at a shorter term chart, okay, you will see most of the time like this, this jump which has happened, which is maybe outside your, uh, your trading started from late July okay but you can still see that this is uh, overall an uptrend okay so you would be biased towards buying right so therefore uh, you know so this is, even there you can see the short term eventually you'll see again that the short term trend also is likely to go up you're likely to make money uh, you can obviously because you're now you're looking at a very short term trading project which is like hardly five weeks or something so therefore you have to look at very short term charts but even then if you remember what I showed you here you don't have the luxury of these kinds of charts um, because we don't have the charting software for that but in an ideal situation when you're working professionally you these kinds of uh, uh, obstructions will not remain okay so the approach would ideally be if you're trading once again all of this is purely technical trading okay which is a valuable skill to learn okay it's fairly simple it's very rigorous and it has the objective of being very objective uh, has the advantage of being very objective okay so it's a useful skill to pick up and uh, so uh, ideally what you would do is you would approach it from this point of view you would set up your charts chart system in such a way that you're looking at all the long-term charts okay so like now for instance when I I actually trade sterling so I, I trade currencies right now okay uh, with with real money so what I've been doing is I've been actually uh, I had a good trade here where I was going short why was I going short because uh, I was looking at the long-term trend and had a bearish view on the big picture but then eventually I would end up using much smaller stops but that gives you the bias the big picture gives you the bias okay so so this is uh, that and this also is tied to the idea of trading in multiple time frames remember what we discussed the other day that the idea of trading in multiple time frames okay so for the sake of simplicity we've only discussed two time frames long term and short term but you can actually train in trade in multiple you can have multiple layers of uh, trading systems each of them is a trading system long term and short term okay so you can actually have multiple layers of trading systems okay which look at different time frames right so uh, so the second part of the response to your question is the long term is still important even in a short term trading project the long term is important because the long term trend drives the bias in the short term trend if that trend is not reversed okay like in the case case of in, like here also if you're looking at cable okay if you're looking at cable you can see the big picture trend is pointing down okay there's a pretty strong downtrend so even here i the, i would absolutely not think about buying this stuff at this point okay i would only think of selling or uh, not having a, or being square okay because i can see the long-term trend i see that the long-term trend bias is down 
So in this case, I feel that the chances of making money are much better if you go short. So either you go short, okay, like I had a trailing stop over here from the earlier shot. So the trailing stop got stopped out last night. You can see the small thing here. So I placed a trailing stop over here. The trailing stop is nothing but what we saw that day, what we did that day with TCS. You saw that we had placed a stop here. We we put that, I'll explain this term later on, but it's a trailing stop, okay? That we had a stop here. Remember what we did? We split up the thousand shares position of TCS into two share, two positions. One to be trading on the short term trend where we had put the stop here, okay? And uh, and one to be trading on the long term. This stop needs to be adjusted. For some reason, this level, level is not correct. When you look at these charts, they are actually showing you where your stops are visually. Many trading systems do that. Many trading systems which have also a charting application attached to it. Okay, like here. One of the things they will do is you can change this display format if you don't want to see all this stuff. You can change it in the chart settings. But by default, what they're showing you is where your stops are. When you're looking at this TCS chart. Okay, so we'll come back to this. But basically what I was saying, so the important point to understand is that the uh, even for short term trading, the long term trend is important because it gives you the bias and you are better off trading in the direction of, other, of the larger trend. Okay, there you have more wind at your back. It's like flying into a tailwind, you know, like tailwind and headwind when you are taking flights. When the aircraft are flying, you heard this expression tailwind and headwind. Like. You never heard these expressions. When you are crossing the Atlantic in a particular direction, there's a tailwind or a headwind. A tailwind means they're hitting the aircraft in front. So it will slow you down. Okay. Sorry, tailwind is means it's coming from the back. Headwind is slowing you down. Okay. So it's the same kind of thing. So if you have if you're trading in the direction of the long term trend, okay, the um, you actually have a tailwind because the long term trend is supporting you. So when you take short term positions of the direction of the long term trend, you have a better chance of success. Is this clear? Okay. So uh, that's the answer to Tarun's question. Hopefully now we must correct this because we can see there was some problem. Obviously there was a mistake. There was a clerical error somewhere. So this stop should not be here. Remember that guys, you remember this picture of TCS, what we were trying to do, right? We had put one stop. We wanted one short term stop. We want one uh, stop for the short term trend position and one stop for the long term trend position. Is this clear? So we had, we actually wanted, and you can see here from the highs, this is 8.5 and this is 8.1. This high is still 8.1. So it hasn't made a new high yet. Okay, so if it had made a new high, we would have shifted the big picture stop to this point. But because it hasn't made a new high, it has to be still here. Okay, all right. Are you following? This is the same thing that we looked at. If you look, if you go back to this picture of TCS, yeah, it's the same thing that we looked at. Remember, okay, that we said that this when we went long over here, we put the stop here. Okay, so half the position was, should have a stop over here and half the position will be treated as a short term position and it has a stop over here right now. Okay, so we must correct this because we should actually see what the position, what the low is here. The, are you guys following what I'm doing? Otherwise, please tell me. 2032, the low here, you can see the low, this is the low that we are interested in. So this low is 20, this is a daily chart. Okay, so. Um, this low is 2032.45, so we should put it at 2032.4. So this uh, second stop that we have, it should not be 2165, it should actually be 2032.4. Are you following what I'm doing? I'm going to update it. Okay, and now you will see that. Um, yeah, now can you see that the picture is giving us, uh, can you see that the chart is giving us the stops have been adjusted on the chart also? Are you able to see visually now? No or no? Oh my God, okay, this is, okay, you can't see, but anyway, you can see something here at least. Okay. Can you see this? Yes. Okay. So essentially in terms of that chart, what you have are basically this, okay? You have, um, okay, essentially on that chart, what is showing is one of the stops is over here, this low here. Can you see that? 
one of the stops is over here this is the short term position okay and one of the stops is over here this is for the long term position okay is this clear now everybody is understood okay so uh, okay yes garvit what's your question sir i was asking by doing this uh, it means that if the if we see that the uh, the low, lows are uh, higher lows are higher than the previous lows this means that higher means higher लॉजिक so basic uh, simple definition we started with the simple definition of the trend okay simple definition but it's a very powerful definition it's simple simple but it's not simplistic you understand this word simplistic you know what simplistic is simplistic is a negative what you're smiling why are you smiling okay so uh, you have to frown in the class you should never smile okay uh, simplistic simplistic has a pejorative connotation okay when we use the word simplistic we have it has a negative connotation so i say that the system designed by piyush is, is very simplistic that means this is not a good comment it's a negative comment okay simplistic means it's it's it doesn't really capture all the essential elements that should be captured it's too simple and it's not capturing all the elements of the system but something that is simple need not always be simplistic okay so you can actually have a system which is very simple but at the same time is not simplistic okay so what we are learning is difference between simple and simplistic okay this is also something to learn because your communication skills are also important and this kind of discussion may be important sometimes okay something is simple but not simplistic okay and it could also be simple and simplistic simplistic is a more subtle uh, assessment which means you are talking about the qualitative uh, properties of the system okay if something is simple it's pretty obvious that something is simple so you can have systems which are very simple but and are still not simplistic because they capture the essence of the uh, of the larger structure okay so the idea what i'm trying to tell you here is there i'm using this kind of definition of a trend the simple definition of a trend which we had higher highs higher lows remember so it's a very simple definition do you agree it's a very simple definition but it's not a simplistic definition because wherever you look in the world even if you look at economic data i have shown you some unemployment data charts yes i have shown you some unemployment data charts even there you will see cyclical movement higher highs higher lows when you look at if you have good micro uh, data on industrial production gdp okay you have to plot gdp on a absolute basis like 12 trillion dollars then goes down to 11 trillion then 13 trillion like that if you plot everywhere you look in the world you will see these kinds of patterns higher highs higher lows you will see these cyclical patterns you will see these up trends and down trends and you will see that when you look deep inside those you will see that there are always this pattern of the soft we call this a soft tooth pattern okay that it's yeah it's higher low higher highs and higher lows okay so this is like a soft tooth pattern so this you see everywhere so although the definition of the trend is simple it's not simplistic because it captures the essence of the system and it captures it completely comprehensively all trends will have this feature all all the variables whatever you look at economic data market as asset prices everywhere you will have this feature and therefore it's always a a, a logical uh, can you see that the system is logical that i am why i am buying therefore i am i am maintaining a long position or i am buying additional shares okay which means that i believe that the uptrend is going to continue higher okay so the moment the market makes a new low if it's going to continue higher that means there should be a continuous pattern of higher highs and higher lows yes all right so the moment it goes and breaks the previous low and makes a new low uh, a lower low then the pattern of higher highs higher lows is broken so which means my assumption about the uptrend continuing is destroyed so if i do something based on an assumption and then we find that assumption is invalidated i should reverse that action and therefore logically i am exiting those you can see the system is logical also it's not some arbitrary system over
so the sun is shining so let me buy it so it's not a it's not an arbitrary system it's a logical system okay so uh, you can see how it's a very simple system and it's a logical system and if you manage your risk properly okay if you allocate your position size with proper risk management by doing this kind of trading you will virtually never go bankrupt okay the market can never destroy you because you are in control you are putting in your orders you are sizing your positions correctly so that you don't lose too much on any particular trade because you don't know what will happen on any particular trade okay so you have to be ready to lose money so you budget you size your position we already saw that you saw how position sizing is done by taking the risk into account yes, yes. so if you size your position you always put your orders into the market every position has a bracketed at least has a stop order bracketing is not so important but the stop is important okay you can manage without brackets like i don't use take profit orders i never use take profit i only use this uh, trailing stop okay so uh, that's a that is still an okay system but if you don't have the stops then you're dead okay you always have to have the stops so all right so what were we saying here okay so we're going to learn a new element of this which is that the element of pyramiding okay so you can see this now okay <laughs> pyramiding winner essentially means adding or uh, let's say uh, let's call this increasing increasing position size I'm not writing proper English, so I'm not writing the initial trade. Uh, when initial trade, because this is all broken English, this is just for our understanding. Increasing position size when initial trade has moved um, uh, substantially into profit. Okay. All right. Okay so let's uh, look at how this is going to be done okay so this is a very important thing to do because this is another element of technical trading that you're learning very important element because as a professional money manager to produce outstanding returns it is not sufficient that you just take the initial position okay uh, and you keep a stock to protect your uh, to protect your downside that those are also important but the other element that you have to add to it is, uh, is the idea of pyramiding winners which means essentially what is happening is again I'm looking at the big picture okay I'm just looking at the big picture you can't see anything here at all okay, let me try and see if I can change the colors uh, I'll have to edit chart Let's see if I can change anything. It is going to take a long time. Okay, we'll, we'll just do it with the. We won't wait for this. We'll just do it with the, with this chart. Okay. So if you look at this here, okay. If we look look at say 240. So four hour chart. All right. Okay. So as I said, now it's always important, even when you're trading in the very short term with a very short term time horizon you must have an understanding of the big picture okay so when you're looking at this uh, you have uh, we'll continue with the TCS example because we've been working with it so every so far all you guys follow what has been done okay that we saw this chart it was falling here and we decided to buy we assumed that the uptrend would continue so initially we put a stop for the position here a thousand shares and then uh, it fell initially a little bit okay it went out of the money a little bit and then it has risen so far so when we saw it rising what we did is we split the position into two 500 each one we kept as a long-term position and one we kept as a short-term position and the short-term position was put here we put a stop for the short-term position over here is everyone following okay that's what we have done now ideally what would have happened earlier because this 1000 shares I just bought it quickly because I wanted to do a trade to show you guys so I hadn't thought about it properly so ideally what would happen is we would already be thinking about two time frames so instead of buying 1000 straight away I mean we would buy 1000 but that would be conceived of as consisting of 500 for the long-term position and 500 for the short-term bucket for the short-term position so you put them in two different buckets from the very beginning you may enter at the same time okay but from the very beginning okay is this clear all right so what would happen now is so what we are going to do with pyramiding so what I was basically telling you is that see all trading is based on a big picture view 
all trading should be based on a big picture view so if you're a professional money manager managing an equity fund okay typically in this case effectively it's a long only equity fund so you're looking at this index is going down but some of the stocks are doing well so you look at TCS and you see that there is some if you feel that there's a long-term upside potential on this stock then you're trying to go and basically see here you have to understand one more thing uh, briefly that um, I'll just give you before we go into pyramiding this idea of diversification you heard this idea of diversification you heard the idea all this Markowitz portfolio why are two people going out at the same time Tarun is already out who is this now just gone out Tarun is already outside so why is Gulati gone out call him in now you don't get stuck outside also <laughs> you call them and there's somebody as well others others will also disappear why have so many people gone out together only one person huh okay but what about the other two where is others others was here no? yes he has disappeared why has, how did he disappear I don't know. Hmm? call him no yes call him tell him you don't have his number just call him who Kushpu you have a number no you are not allowed to call but then he has to tell me you know you can't just walk out of the class if you're not feeling well you have to tell me yeah yeah call him where is he okay um, all right uh, okay so Gorati is aware that he has to come back in case other people want to go out okay you can't just go out and have fun I see many people even in classes are going on I see people walking around outside in the corridor <laughs> It's like a party it's a big party okay have you guys heard of diversification okay so while we are discussing the idea of pyramiding and how professional money managers take views on stocks okay how they manage this idea of stock picking you've heard of this idea of stock picking okay okay so all basically most of the active management is going to be based uh, centered around stock picking which means you have to start everything in the index is not the same you have to evaluate the stocks you have to decide okay this stock is more likely to go up and this is not likely to go up so I worry so it's not like everything is equal and you have an equally balanced diversified portfolio okay that's not what active managers do most active fund managers will be engaged in stock picking therefore selecting winners and losers all right so this idea of diversification you heard of this idea of diversification have you has everyone heard about diversification right so this diversification is a very academic idea actually okay so most professional money managers if you look at Warren Buffett you look at uh, um, I forget what's the name of that guy um, there was a famous money manager who managed money for George Soros I'm forgetting his name Jim Rogers okay most of these guys they laugh at uh, they laugh at this idea of diversification okay so if you look at Buffett's views on diversification you can google and YouTube you can google Jim Rogers Jim Rogers is a very successful equity fund manager all these guys laugh at diversification so most professional money manager this is a very academic idea diversification okay most professional money managers don't believe in diversification they believe in concentrated bets okay so the opposite of diversification is uh, so what I'm saying is uh, Buffett you know who Buffett is right if I just say Buffett that is good enough that is Warren Buffett Jim Rogers etc frown on diversification they frown on diversification because the, the point I'm trying to emphasize is you see the connection to the between these ideas when we are talking about stock picking okay and we are to, and we are saying that diversification is not that hot idea in actual professional money management can you see the connection that there are like 50 stocks in the nifty so if you wanted to be diversified you would buy maybe 30 35 stocks etc but if you are looking at stock picking and you and you think that diversification is not such a good idea you're looking at concentrated bets most professional money managers are, who are very successful they will typically have very concentrated bets okay so uh, are you are you following the idea of concentrated bets you understand what is the difference between diversification if you're diversified then you have like 35 40 stocks in your portfolio but if you are concentrated bets mean you have only about five or six stocks in your portfolio so you're making very concentrated bets on those stocks okay so opposite of diversification is uh, concentrated bets the expression okay you have to learn how to use the right lingo okay 
So the idea is the point I'm trying to make here is that diversification. You see in the textbooks, academic finance textbooks, you see diversification is a very big thing. But actually, professional money managers. They, they laugh at these ideas of uh, you see Puffet videos on YouTube is laughing at diversification. Okay, this is for fools. You know, these kind of statements they make. Okay, opposite of diversification is uh, making concentrated bets. I'm mentioning this here because it is connected to the idea of stock picking that you are making uh, bets on particular, you're, you're evaluating different stocks in the particular universe that you're allowed to trade, which is the Nifty 50 stocks in this example. And you're saying that, okay, some of these stocks are likely to go up much more than the others. Okay. So what happened, Anush, you're not well. So if you're not well, you can go, but you have to inform me. You can't just I walk out of the class. I went for the medicine that I thought. Okay. The medicine. Okay. Okay. So fine. Got it. If you want to go, you can yeah, go. Fine. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So, uh, opposite of you understand these terms, you have to always use the right lingo. As a finance student, you can't just talk like a layman. You have to use the right lingo. So, the opposite of diversification is making concentrated bets. Okay. So, essentially, what we are saying is we are connecting this to the idea of stock picking. So, we are saying that. Yeah. So, we are going to make concentrated bets. In this case, we find, let's say, we find that the tech stocks are going up while the nifty overall is falling let's say we find that okay maybe some other stocks are also going up then we are going to just go for concentrated bets on the tech stocks okay because our goal is to make money we are not interested in uh, just adhering to theoretical principles like diversification and all that okay we have to make money and the way you make uh, those who make outstanding returns they place concentrated bets okay so what you do is uh, you have to have a long term view on these stocks okay there could be a fundamental element to that view as well so you have a long term view now so you have so you have this long term view and around this long term view you will do many trades okay all driven on this uh, driven by the same long term view are you following what i'm saying that you have a big picture view and the big picture view doesn't change very dramatically overnight because it's a big picture view so if you see this big trend uh, i don't want to give you a sense of complacency uh, lull you into a sense of complacency but generally for this kind of a long term trend to change and it's a very long term trend which you don't see even here it's only a 4 hour chart uh, it will take a little time for it to change okay uh, so you'll be able to detect it so the point is that so as this trend keeps on going higher and higher okay uh, you can do many trades around that same uh, around that same trend on that basic big picture view are you following what i'm saying there are many opportunities to trade around the big same big picture view okay so uh, so so what we are doing is so therefore now we are splitting it into and this is where the idea of pyramiding comes in okay so pyramiding essentially we go back to the idea of pyramiding are you following what i'm saying are you guys following are you, are you feeling like you're lost are you following the train of thought okay so what we are saying is that pyramiding winners means essentially increasing position size when the initial trade has moved substantially into profit okay this is an important point because you're going to increase your position size so basically the idea is it is similar again to poker strategy we bring you back once again to poker strategy and it's important to understand that okay similarity to you should also understand this in, in our country we have a very especially those who are very socially conservative will have they think that all card games are all gambling you know oh my god card games is gambling okay so there are certain card games which are games of skill like blackjack blackjack and poker are regarded as games of skill there's actually a u.s supreme court case also which has uh, established that poker is to be treated as a game of skill it's not gambling okay so one of the elements of poker strategy as i told you was that if you feel that your hand is not so strong okay relative to the others then you should not bet okay you should fold then the other thing is the, the other the flip side of that is if you feel confident that your hand is very strong then you should bet a large amount okay are you following what i'm saying so when your position is not it's the same concept in cricket if it's a good ball then you should not try to if it's outside the off stump, you shouldn't try to play a stroke especially opening the innings but if it's a short ball or it's a full toss then you go for broke right are you following it's the same concept essentially when the when the when you don't have the advantage you you try to be defensive but when you feel the uh, the situation favors you then you go for broke okay so you have to be aggressive and you have to be defensive also depending on the situation is this clear so this is the idea of pyramiding so similarity to, uh, similarity to poker strategy okay 
uh, we should actually say optimal poker strategy. Uh, optimal poker strategy requires that when you um, when you have a strong hand, you should bet a large amount. Okay, so there is a very interesting book. I think that book is deals with that jack. There's a but you can read that book if you want. There's a book by Ed Top. Okay, it's called Beat the Dealer. This is again talking about. Uh, so this guy is a mathematician actually, and he's also a money manager. So he used to go around the Vegas casinos playing blackjack, but he was analyzing the uh, the cards and all that. So these guys are known as card counters. So the casinos don't like that. They they want dumb people, you know, people who just come in and just bet and without using their brains. They want dumb people. They don't want smart people who are actually counting the cards and doing probabilistic analysis in their head, because those guys will make money and then the casino will lose money. Okay, so what the casino wants is basically stupid people who just come and bet, bet without thinking about things. Okay, so this guy used to go around the Vegas casino and eventually the, none of the casinos would let him enter. Okay, so this is what happens with a lot of these uh, card counters. Okay, so anyway, so this is an interesting book to read if you are interested in all these elements, uh, blackjack and poker, and how, how you can think systematically about these things. Okay, and as I told you, many poker strategy, uh, many poker champions are actually being hired by hedge funds okay so then this world championship of poker has a lot of prize money actually quite a lot of prize money so uh, okay so uh, what would we saying so pyramiding when is essentially means increasing the position size when the initial trade has moved substantially into profit okay so as you can see with respect to your big picture view uh, you know I took this big picture view here we had this view that okay we could have had a bearish view also but we decided to take a bullish view by assuming that the trend is still incomplete so as it turns out it seems to have moved substantially in our favor okay which means what it means that the our big picture view about the uptrend still being intact is probably correct okay so the market price action is the market action is showing us that your view big picture view is probably correct so in this case now you have to really add to your positions and increase because the more positions you have now you the more money you'll make so you have to be really aggressive when the market is showing you that your initial big picture view is correct so you have to pyramid your positions so pyramiding here means think about what happens essentially i'll tell you briefly what we are now we are going to zoom into this part again okay unfortunately we don't have uh, this kind of view which you have in sterling okay uh, we don't have that in uh, we don't this this particular system will not work for indian equities so we can't get this display here but essentially what we are going to do is the same thing we are going to now zoom into this part is this clear so i'm going to change it from four hours to 15 minutes what am i doing am i increasing the granularity or decreasing increasing as in i okay i'm increasing the granularity and what is happening to the data range is it shrinking or increasing shrinking okay good okay so uh, all these technical terms remember you have to as a finance student you have you have to be able to use these technical terms okay so what i'm going to do as an idea behind pyramiding now is that remember we had two positions so we have two positions we have a short term we have a long term position which is running with this stock where the entry the entry for both positions at the same time around 21 2101 or something like that is our, our entry entry price okay so both the long term and the short term position the entry price is 2101 but the long term position is still running with a stop off around 2031 let's say or 2032 this is clear to everyone the short term position what we have done is those 500 shares we have now moved the stop to here you remember that from the last class okay is everyone clear okay all right so the way that we go back to our risk now the idea behind pyramiding is that it's not sufficient that okay i did one trade here i bought 500 shares for the long term position 500 for the short term position and then i have put my uh, uh, trailing stop for the uh, short term position okay here uh, and that's it if it either it goes and stops me out here or it keeps on going higher okay that's not good enough you have to pyramid as a professional money manager if you want to be really successful when the trend is going in your favor you have to be able to aggressively add to your positions okay so how do you do that what is the system so the idea is now we are going to buy more 
basically the idea is we're going to buy more okay and we are going to keep using this stock the same stock because we are going to buy assume let's assume we are going to buy more for the short term position right now okay we're going to buy more for the short term position now you have to keep thinking in these two positions all the time trading in multiple and you can later on extend extend it to <laughs> multiple time frames you can have a very long term system a long term system a medium term system a short term system very short term system but for the sake of simplicity i'm giving you only two systems is everyone clear okay but you're not restricted to two you can keep on uh, increasing the time frame so the idea is now we want to buy more okay and we are going to buy more for the short term system okay so that we can make more money this is clear all right in fact actually i think this will get stopped out but never mind about that let's not assume that let's just assume that it's going to go up i'm just going to show you the the logic how the the logic of pyramiding works okay so what did we do so the question is we want to buy more so is this clear now we clearly established that we want to buy more for the short term system so we are pyramiding winners okay so we are going to now practice this okay so how does the pyramiding thing work okay so in pyramiding winners okay we take the example of tcs okay all right so uh, um, so we want to buy more for short term if i write like this is everyone okay yes sir we want to buy more for the short term system okay this is clear uh, using same um this is the the shortcut for stop loss this is clear same stop loss actually we should just call it stop but anyway as as um for earlier short term lot what is that earlier short term lot that i'm referring to this is the when we bought these 1000 shares actually we were buying 500 for the long term position and 500 for the short term position this is the earlier short term lot that i'm referring to is this clear you are going out where gulati has not come back what where is he what is he he just hanging around outside i frequently see him hanging around outside when the classes are going on <laughs> just call him and Uh, it's like you know when you see the babies some of the babies have you seen they when they start walking they have a long leash like a horse they have a leash on the baby the baby walks for 10 feet and all and then you can pull we have to use that for all the students when they go out you have to pull them back in okay so we are going to buy more for the short term system clear yes. and we are going to use the same stock can you see once again the logic because if i am buying for the short term system i am saying that this degree of movement is my long term trend these big picture moves that you can see here or you can't see it here but actually here there is a big picture movement okay these are the i don't know why you still can't see anything anyway so uh, doesn't matter but this is the big picture trade this is clear to everyone okay these are the long term trends okay but the short term trend is this degree of movement are you following the short term trend if you don't follow at any time when i look at many people i see that their faces are all very looking blank okay what is arora doing maybe we should come forward and you should hand over your phone also now you will also be a designated phone culprit now you will have to where your phone is somewhere else okay hand over and come to the front now where will you come to the front who sitting okay that is bharat is sitting okay you sit there fine no problem concentrate on what is being taught in the class don't i don't want to see anybody looking down looking here looking there everybody should be looking at me okay all right yes okay what happened to gulati he is not coming he disappeared okay but he, okay so now who will call gulati tell him to come back this yes you are okay may have will call him okay okay fine guys now let's focus once again on this okay is this clear so we are going to add we are going to pyramid the position you understand now what pyramiding is pyramiding means you are adding to your positions when the trend is going in your favor okay so in the we are going to add the short term position oh 
<laughs> okay, we are stuck then. We are stuck. We can't do anything. So I'll have to penalize him. I'll just mark him absent for this class then. In that case, if he doesn't come back within a reasonable period. Okay. All right. So uh, guys, now so we are going to add pyramiding. How are we going to do it? You could do it against a long-term system also, and you could also do it against a short-term system. But you'll see shortly why we are not doing it for the long-term system because the long-term system is still going to lose money. Can you see that? If nothing. If our whole view is proved to be wrong and the market just crashes down from here, goes through this stop and then goes through this stop also, then on the long term position we are going to make money. Are we going to make money or lose money? We are going to lose money because we are long over here, 2101 and the stop is over here. Is everyone following? So we are going to lose money on the long term position. So we are not in a position to add to the long term position because the initial risk has is still there. Okay, but look at the difference in the case of the short term position. What has happened? The entry price is here and the stop is here. So if the stop is triggered, are we going to lose money or make money? What? Many people are looking blank. Yes, Kanika? Is my question clear? Clear. Question is clear. Yeah. So with respect to the short term position, because we went, our entry price is here for 500 shares. And our stop is over here. All right. So if the stop is triggered, are we going to lose money or make money? We are going to make money. Okay. So in this case, that's why I'm saying that we are we can afford to add because we are always willing to take some calculated risk. We already have a risk budget. It's not that we are always like Tanya was saying she doesn't want to take she doesn't want to lose money. But you have to be aggressive with your uh, within the with a controlled risk approach. Okay. So you, you have to be always taking risk in a control way. What happened? Okay. So when you guys go, when you, you have to inform me. You can't just walk out here because you are supposed to. Only one guy is supposed to go out at a time. So if you go out, then others can't go out. Okay. So you have to be responsible and come back on time. And if you have a, if you are not feeling well or something like that, then you have to inform me. Then I can let you go. Even if I, you know, if I feel it's a genuine case, then I'll just let you go and you won't lose your attendance. Okay. But that doesn't mean everybody should start feeling unwell suddenly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> then we have a problem. Okay. All right. Okay, so is everyone clear about this? Why I'm talking about adding to the short term position because the long term position, the initial risk is still there, is still exposed. Are you following? Because I took some initial risk for 500 shares between 2101 and this 2032, wherever our stop is actually. You can see this. Our stop is 2032. Okay, so this this 2101 to 2032, this money we are still going to lose because so therefore we can't afford to add to the long term position, but the short term position will make money if the stop is going to be triggered. So we can afford to add to it. Is this clear? So we're going to be pyramiding because pyramiding is an essential uh, part of your uh, trading approach. Okay, a good trading system should have a pyramiding formula as well. Okay, so we're going to be pyramiding with the short term system. All right, so now we come back to how much. So is this clear so far to everybody? So now what is the problem that we have? Uh, if we go back to our decision problems. Okay. We have all kinds of decision problems. Asset class, market, instrument. Have these already been solved in this case? Okay. Asset class is what? Equity. Okay. Market is? TCS. The market is TCS. Is this clear? All right. And instrument is? Spot. Instrument is spot. Okay. Everyone is clear. Should I bring up that framework once again? Okay. That's why you see your concepts have to be clear. Okay. Your concepts have to be clear. Um, asset classes, markets, and instrument. The instrument is spot because these are spot based. You're trading equities on a spot basis. You're not trading futures. You're not trading forwards. You're not trading options. Okay. So it is spot. Okay. And uh, the asset class obviously is equities. Okay, so the market, some people had a confusion, uh, but I've, there should not have been any confusion because I've explained this many times. In the case of foreign exchange, I told you that if I look at foreign exchange, how many markets are there? 
essentially there's nc2 markets where n is equal to let's say 170 maybe there are 170 countries in the world okay so every country has a currency so theoretically you have nc2 markets where n is equal to 169 or 170 this is clear so every pair is a market so similarly here what you're trading is tcs is the base asset and what is the terms asset INR, correct? So you're actually trading. If you want to say it crudely, like when you want to talk to a computer, you say TCS INR. In this case, the market is TCS INR. Okay. Or in in layman's terms, when you're talking to a human being, you would say the market is uh, you know TCS common stock priced in INR. Okay. Priced in terms of INR. That's why INR is the term. Is everyone clear now? Okay, so we had a good revision on that. That was also necessary. Asset class market instrument is clear. Buy sell. Now we are talking, but in particular about the the pyramiding decision. Do we have we already made the buy sell decision? Yes. Yes. Yes, because we are already biased to the long side. We see that the big trend up seems to be going up. Okay, so we want to buy more. So the buy sell decision has also been made. Okay, and then uh, this part we can actually just. Uh, the other trading uh, the other decision problem is entry price okay entry price is whether basically the entry price decision is whether we should use a market order limit order or stop order okay this is the broad entry price decision, which means it's just basically a shorthand way of saying I've written it as MOLO short SO okay which is a shorthand way of saying again once again this is almost like written for a computer but if you're talking to a human being the way you would explain is that explain it is what is this entry price decision problem even after we have decided to buy or sell there, there remains the question of at what price should we buy or sell should we just buy at the current market price uh, should we just buy at the current market price or do we think that we can get a more favorable price than the current market price or do we think that we want to buy at a less favorable price that I've not discussed that option with you but you should be aware theoretically that that option exists also all right so is everyone clear about what the entry price decision problem is yes, you realize that this is a decision problem everybody understands what a decision problem is yes, yes? okay so uh, therefore now so we have so the entry price decision problem is mo lo or so whether i should use a market order limit order or stop order okay which is another way of saying whether i should buy at the uh, price equal to the current market price or at a price more favorable than the current market or at a price less favorable than the current market this last part less favorable we have not discussed it with you and i'll explain it later but it is an option as well this is clear this is what the entry price decision problem is now for the sake of simplicity i have at the moment we are just assuming that everything is in every situation this particular decision problem is solved by choosing a market order is everyone clear about this this is our uh, shorthand fudge solution for now okay later on we'll deal with this problem in a little more depth but for the moment we can just uh, save ourselves the time and the headache by solving this in the same way at every in every situation whenever the entry price problem uh, decision problem comes up we are going to solve it by deciding to use a market order is everyone clear yes. Kulbu is not very happy with it but you're clear about what we are saying okay because it's a I'm just trying to avoid having to discuss this problem in detail at this point so I'm just applying a shorthand rough solution every case we just use a market order is this clear Pulkit is also not very happy with it yeah. you're happy okay so I understand obviously sometimes you can make you can make more money if you use a limit order okay and it gets filled okay but uh, sometimes the limit order may, there are all kinds of pros and cons we'll see that later but for the sake of simplicity we just assume that everything is a market order and as I told you in the long term if you see long term system performance based on empirical data that we have on system testing if you use this simplifying assumption and you're constantly monitoring the market and it's not possible humanly to constantly monitor but if you have a trading system it can if you have an algorithmic trading system it can actually monitor for you but what I'm telling you is as, a, as you can take this as a golden rule that even if you use this simplistic solution for a, a very simple solution again it's not simplistic it's a simple solution for the entry price problem even if you use this it's not going to have an adverse effect long term on your trading system okay because if, if you look at the research the research actually says that the real big decision is this one okay this is where the real big decision is this is what affects if you look at the research later on okay 
uh, on trading system the profitability of the trading system is really determined by the exit price okay both both the exit price both with loss and with profit this is really what determines the profitability of trading systems if you look at the research okay so it's counterintuitive okay most of the time and what does theoretical finance focus on according to you which decision problem does theoretical finance focus on most of the time are you following my question the finance theory that most of you that you guys have learned so far and you look at your finance textbooks you see what is discussed and what the market also discusses when you look at your CNBC or you look at your Bloomberg TV and you see all these uh, analysts talking about things talking about markets right and stocks or currencies or whatever what do you think which decision problem do you think that the general public and finance theorists focus most of their time on which of these asset class market instrument buy sell entry price exit price with where do you think the market Tarun is correct okay so it's actually the buy sell decision if you think about it most of the heart heartache in the markets you know should I buy should I sell you know should I do think this is gonna go up if you think about it actually and you look at your finance theory also most of the finance all the fundamental analysis that you look at okay all the fundamental analysis value investing all these books which you should read okay I'll give you guys a list of books which you should read okay all of that stuff all the heartache is focused on this one which is not actually the right thing to do okay let me therefore make it here and this is what you should really be focusing on we'll do it both ways if I color it like this can you still see it you can see the colors okay so what I'm telling you is actually now this is all very hard nose this is very unconventional stuff that I'm telling you okay if you go and tell a finance professor an academic finance professor they would not agree with you okay but I'm telling you this from the point of view of actual trading system performance in real money uh, uh, in, in real money situations uh, in markets okay all right so you notice so you should also be clear about this okay so it's only Tarun or maybe somebody else also had it but you should have understood that all this stuff all this NPV um, your IRR, NPV, all this stuff that you have done, all this company analysis, which you do, stock valuation, okay? You have to be able to see the connection because ultimately most of the time what happens is when finance has been taught at most of the business schools, they just teach you this stuff. They don't really connect it to the decision problem, okay? So what we are doing here is that entire curriculum is based on decision problems because what really matters in life is decision problems. You have to solve these decision problems. If it's not connected to a decision problems, uh, to a decision problem, then we don't need to waste time on it. Okay. So, uh, okay. So, so this is the point here, basically, right? So, understand that all your theoretical finance, all the most of the markets uh, agonizing and the heartache is all over the buy sell decision. Okay. But actually, what really matters is the exit price, and that's why I'm telling you that even in real life, if you design a system which always trades on market orders it's not going to be a problem it's not going to affect your system profitability okay what is really going to affect it is the exit price and then we'll see how much you lose on each trade how much you try to make on each trade i've already given you a, a preview of this trade-off okay i've already told you that if you are risk, if you're risking say one dollar if you're risking one dollar on your entry when you enter the position if your risk is one dollar you should be you should not uh, you know take and if it moves into a profit you should be looking to make at least three preferably four five six times your risk are you following which means you're risking one dollar you should look to make three dollars four dollars six dollars on on each trade in terms of profit okay so we'll see how that works out we'll see a, a, a mathematical formulation of that later on okay so is everything clear about this now so now when we once again we are in the pyramiding problem okay so when we go through the decision problems with respect to the pyramiding problem we see that all these have already been solved asset class market instrument has been solved buy sell is also solved because pyramiding here because our original positions are long and we are pyramiding so that means we want to buy more that is also clear now entry price i have forcibly solved for you by assuming everything is a market okay all right so now we have to worry about the uh, the important uh, exit price decision which is with a loss okay if you have a loss where will you exit okay exit price with loss and profit you understand when it's moving into a loss at what point do you cut your losses and exit 
and when it's going into a profit at what point do you capture your realize your profits okay and do a take profit okay so this one obviously the one with the loss is much more important okay uh, as you can see uh, some some trading system like I don't use it I my trading system does not have any profit orders so I don't even have this decision problem I have removed this decision problem I only use the uh, that I have removed one decision problem so I've made the system less complex to that extent okay so you can easily operate without a take profit you don't need a take profit okay so we'll see how that is done okay but so this exit price for first concern is exit price will loss is that also clear to us from our previous analysis yes or no yes Aurora is my question clear the exit price with loss that from based on the previous analysis we have done so far on TCS and we are adding to our short term we are talking about pyramiding uh, for our short term position okay or our short term system okay so in that context in that particular context has this decision already been solved or do we need to solve it the exit price with salt loss is my question clear in the context of this particular example that we are discussing okay it's already solved okay yeah we already know it right this is the position somewhere around 2205 we can just look at the system it is actually 2205 okay which means the low must have been 2205.05 uh, okay so that's why the stop is at 22 uh, 2205 this is clear okay so we already know this exit okay so so this exit at loss this decision is already made okay and exit at profit as I said exit with profit is not so important we can work even without this problem so again I'm going to minimize this problem for the moment and forget about it yeah yes um, yes Gil you have a question yes give her the mic give her the mic Sir, is pyramiding uh, concerned only with the long position or is it uh, no, no, no. both? Both. both if you see my definition, look at my definition. Increasing position size, okay, when initial trade has moved substantially into profit. This kind of language, does it encompass both long and short positions? Is it biased in any way? Right? Okay, so I'm not like it's not like I'm saying he or she I'm saying person Okay, so here I'm saying uh, increasing an initial trade has moved So this could happen to short positions also the same logic will apply. Okay, it's a fair question But short answer is it applies both ways huh? Yeah, yeah, vice no, in this case, there's no vice versa. I don't need vice versa here in this kind of language I say any person can come in that means I don't have to separately say girls can come in, boys can also come in. So here this language is neutral uh, with respect to the direction of the position, right? It does not, it is not talking about this part of the language. Increasing position size when initial trade has moved substantially into profit. This language covers short positions also and long positions also. Do you see that? Yes, sir. Yes, Tarun. You're okay now. You still have some issues. No, 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 no. It doesn't apply symmetrically. There's no vice versa on this. See, when you take initial position, increasing position size. Let me make it uh, more clear. From the initial. make it absolutely clear from the initial position size okay okay even make it even more clear increasing total position size from the initial okay let's say initial position size or we can put initial we can put total here also is this clear Okay, you're talking what you're talking about, what Tarun is talking about is a different thing which is called um, we use a language like doubling down, okay? Okay doubling down we can say is see the battery here has run out okay doubling down is i'm just going to use uh, 
you don't have to write proper English. Opposite of okay. opposite. What Tarun is hinting at is uh, opposite of doubling down on losers. Okay, <laughs> or doubling down. Uh, okay, or averaging losers. Is it right? So, what Tarun is talking about is averaging losers or sometimes also called doubling down. Okay, these are the expressions that we use in the market. Okay, this is just the exact opposite of pyramiding winners. Pyramiding is the expression would be used for only winning positions. Okay, so uh, the idea is the position, the trend, the big trend is uh, your suspicion about the big trend was correct. So, maximize uh, you know your view. Okay, maximize your profits based on the correct view. This is actually this is again as we say we make that in the game shows we have this can sound right not to be done this is a no no okay pyramiding winners is a yes yes so we are trading teaching you the principle of good trading which means pre-plan your risk size your positions according to the pre-planned risk don't just it doesn't just fall from the sky how many units to buy it not something that falls as an exogenous variable from the sky okay it is an endogenous variable okay this is to be done this is clear pyramiding winners is okay doubling down or averaging losers is not okay okay so what tarun is talking about if we go back to his doubling down idea what he's saying you can see as i was suspecting this loss has been triggered as you can see our loss almost triggered not yet triggered it looks like on the chart okay almost looks like it's gone okay all right what time is it okay it's almost three. okay so um what we're going to do is right what tarun is talking about is he's saying what he's talking about he's talking about doubling down of our averaging losers what he's saying is okay we bought 1000 shares at 2101 okay we bought it here then we put a stop over here okay so typically the problem is that typically those who average losers okay they don't even have the plan of putting stops so what they do is they buy here okay then as the market drops okay if, the, if i like bought i bought it here then the market dropped as you saw for a few days it dropped so if it drops here if i'm averaging losers means then i buy more shares here okay so this is high this is a very bad uh, trading strategy this is what is what amateurs do okay so this you should not do so when you and so therefore you can also see that the uh, concept of pyramiding doesn't apply in reverse it applies to long and short positions but when they are in profit but it does not apply to so when let's say we bought a thousand shares let's forget about temporarily uh, or let's talk about only the long-term position okay so the long-term position or let's talk about the full th thousand shares let's talk about because both long-term and short-term would have been stopped out okay so you buy a thousand shares okay and you put a stop over here initially okay initially you put a stop over here so when it starts going down you don't increase your position you've already planned that the loss will be from here to here 2101 to 2032 this much money you're going to lose and you're willing to lose that much money on thousand shares okay and whatever that loss is that is okay with you that's one percent of your risk capital so that's why you enter thousand shares entry price here exit price here now if the position is moving into a loss there's nothing more for you to do your management of the position that burden increases only when you have a profitable position but then you have to think about pyramiding but when you have a losing position there's not much additional work for you to do because you've already planned everything okay you plan thousand shares this is the entry price this is the exit price you know what the maximum loss is the maximum loss is equal to one percent of your risk capital so you enter this trade and then if it's going against you there's nothing more for you to do you can just forget about this position okay but if it moves into a profit then you have a lot more work to do because you have to try and pyramid it carefully okay this is clear okay so that what you're talking about is doubling down that's highly unprofessional okay that means you basically you don't have a risk plan you are you just bought some then you're losing money and then you're saying oh it's even cheaper let me buy some more so eventually uh, you know what will happen is eventually if it keeps on falling okay then you can have a huge loss so which and also it means that you're out of control the moment you haven't put a stop into the market when you enter a position and you don't have a stop in the market means you have given you're out of control okay so in this kind of an environment the market is merciless so if you give up control you will be taken out in no time at all okay is this clear to everyone okay 
we have we still have a lot of time okay so we are going to just ignore this uh, this movement okay it's in fact because i just want to show you the principle what is involved in pyramiding there's another principle that you can use in your own trading okay that is so for pyramiding we've solved all the decision problems you can see that stop is triggered can you see that only one is left that stop has already been triggered okay that's why i was telling you that in fact that i think it will get triggered but so it got triggered but we are just going to uh, imagine that it has not get uh, not been triggered because we i just want to show you how the principle works okay all right so what will happen is you had a stop over here trailing stop okay for your uh, this is called a trailing stop okay when you have uh, let me just write this here in your thing So the trailing stop concept is okay. a stop order. Okay, this is in your outline notes. Okay, so this trailing stops which you have access to. So trailing uh, stop is a stop order. Okay. You know, every stop order has a trigger price. Okay, price shorthand is PX. Okay, trigger price for which has been adjusted higher, lower. Okay, after. So it's a long definition, okay, which is going to be in your notes anyway, okay. But this is just for your own reference. Visually, just understanding, understand it. What do we mean by a trailing stop? A trailing stop is nothing but where we talk about, okay. I enter two positions here, a 2101. Okay, I enter a, uh, a short-term position and a long-term position, 500 shares each. So now let's just talk about the short-term position to understand the concept of trailing stop. Okay, what it is is. When I enter the short term position, even for that short term position, the trailing st the, the stop was here. Remember that? Initially, the stop for both positions was here. Is that clear? Yes. Okay. Both were here. But when I saw this kind of movement and we saw this short term trend developing, we moved the stop for the short term position, we moved it higher than the initial stop position yes. because the market has moved higher okay so we move it higher than the initial trade stop position and we moved it to here okay so this is called a trailing stop it's called trailing because okay so if one runner is running ahead and another running is behind the second runner we say is trailing the first runner because he's behind okay so the trailing stop because the stop orders are always behind the market because they are always going to execute at a per price worse than the market so even if it's a downtrend, like if, if the market is here and I put a stop order here, that is still behind the market. If the market is here and I put a stop order here, it's still behind the market because it's kind of trailing the market. Are you following? Okay. So it's less favorable. So that's all the trailing stop is. Trailing stop only means that initially you put on a position. Okay. Initially you put on a position with a original stop level. But then in this case, it's a long position. That's why I've given the definition as higher, lower, both sides. So it's a long position. So in this case, and the market moves higher, the market has moved higher after you did your trade. The market moved higher after you did your trade, which is what the def that this is over here. The market moved higher. So you moved your stop also a little higher according to a short term pattern that you could see. Is this clear? That's why this was called a trailing trailing stop. That's all a trailing stop means. That means it's trailing the market as it is moving. Okay, after you put on your position, the market moves in a particular way. And if it moves in, in pro, into a profit for you, whether it's a short or long, okay, then you, instead of taking profit, you just use a trailing stop. Can you see here also when the stop got triggered, we made some money out of it. 
because we went long over here and we uh, got stopped over here okay so there's a profit involved into this okay but it is still based on a stop order that's why it's called a trailing stop because it's trailing the market and is as the market moves is this clear okay all right we still have three minutes so the only thing that's left to do for us is all the decisions have been taken only one decision remains which is the number of units number of units that would be decided in exactly the same way what we would do is we would basically see let's assume that uh, since we had um, okay we can do it very quickly okay how many um, we can look at uh, this later okay so we had uh, 500 shares for the short term position okay and what was our uh, entry price 2101 let's say are you following can you read all that stuff yes sir okay so Priti, you can read okay so i'm trying to what i'm trying the question i'm trying to answer right now i might take two minutes okay extra i'll just give you the final uh, how to solve the final so the question is you're going to pyramid then how many shares are you going to buy not necessarily 500 just because you bought 500 earlier that has to be separately decided how many are you going to pyramid with okay so how much did i put initially as a risk on the short term position 2101 minus uh, what is that other figure? 2205. Our long term stop. Okay. So I was going to lose this much per share and then I had 500 shares. Okay. What is this? Oh, I didn't put the into sign. All right. So I was losing 52,000 per share. Okay. So therefore, now what I have to do is I have to figure out now where am I entering? how many okay so if i'm entering let's say i was not going to enter here because already below let's say i was entering at 2218 and the stock was 2210 are you following don't get restless just follow this let's say i'm planning to pyramid at 2218 that's where the market is so i'm going to enter at 2218 2218 and the stock is 2210 okay so I will therefore figure out how much am I losing? Eight rupees, okay, per per share. I'm losing eight rupees per share, and I can afford to lose fifty-two thousand. That was my initial uh, risk bet for my short-term position. So therefore, what I will do is I will just write. I have to write ABS here. And divide by eight. Is this clear? ABS is I didn't want this minus sign here. I didn't want a minus sign in the output. Okay, so I took ABS of 52,000. It's a minus. Is everyone clear what I've done? Barul is not clear. So you have to replay the video and understand it. All we are trying to figure out is we said we have to pyramid, we want to pyramid, which we want to buy more. Everything is solved. Only thing that was left is the actual uh, position size. How many shares to pyramid with? As you can see, the number is quite different now. Okay. So you can buy 6,500 shares because you are losing only 8 rupees per share. Okay. And you can afford to lose 52,000. This we are assuming this 52,000 should have been the 1% of your risk capital for the short term system. Are you following the logic? Why 52,000? Why did you risk 52,000 initially for those 500 shares? That was the 1% risk capital allowed, 1% of your risk capital for the short term system. Every system will have a separate allocation of risk capital. Are you following? So that's how you decide. Now you know how to pyramid. Yes, yes. Yash is also not convinced, but we'll figure out somehow sir, later on. Please, yes. Uh, sir, is it necessary to go for this uh, 6500? Uh, 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 this is the maximum position size. This is the maximum. You can go in parts as well. Yeah, you can also go in parts. You can split. I'm just giving you the maximum position size. Is this clear? Is everyone following what has been done? So now you've learned something new. Further nuances to technical trading, how you can pyramid your positions when they are going in your favor. This is clear? Yeah. Okay, fine, fine. Your class is dismissed. So, I've taken two minutes, yes? Tomorrow is 9.30 class. And then your next class is going to be just check that timetable. Your next class is on 27th, I think. Next IPM class. Tomorrow we have 9 p.m. and 9.30. Yes. Is everyone clear? Tomorrow we have IPM at 9.30. So please uh, convey a message to Vaishali that she has to meet Charendra sir. Okay.
Anybody has any technical questions? Then I won't close the video. But three o'clock, nobody will have technical. Will. Which other way around? Use the mic because there's too much now noise. Use the mic so that we can capture anything. We are not going to. We are not going to close the recording. Yes. Suppose I enter at this point at market price of with 100 share of ETH. And I know that this much you are talking about. Are you, are you talking about a situation when even after the stop has been triggered or before? Uh, a fresh trade. That is, you have the information that this stop has been triggered. After that, you are doing it after that. Fresh trade for me. Fresh trade. I am talking about are you incorporating because for the purposes of our pyramiding example I ignored this market action because I wanted to just show you how it's done I didn't want to have to change the stock. So now you have seen this break is falling you have seen this break it's broken this okay so you have the information that this short term trend that has started at least one phase of it has been neutralized okay now only things can happen in the big picture either it eventually stays below this also and eventually breaks this also and this also or it just maybe comes down to here somewhere and then turns around and goes up only two possibilities exist roughly okay uh, big picture wise yeah so now what are you saying so once you have to pay that buy at this market price and I buy suppose 100 shares say you buy to 2200 at 2200 okay. yeah okay and uh, then the capital would come uh, come out to be 2200 into 100 shares so now not capital that's your invested capital, invested capital. so now I want to risk only 1% of this invested capital no, no, that's not how it works. You have to think in terms of risk capital. Invested capital is not the important part. Okay, this is another important thing that you learn in, in my courses. This is an idea which does not almost exist in the uh, investment universe. Not in theoretical finance. In in the professional markets and futures trading, this concept exists. Okay, but other than that, it's a very niche area of uh, the uh, professional money management industry. But by and large, this concept of distinction between invested capital and risk capital does not exist but it's a very important distinction because your invested capital requirements can change depending on what kind of instrument you're trading for instance when you're looking at uh, futures or you're looking at options okay you're uh, especially for futures okay even for margin spot trade spot effects okay uh, you will have very low invested capital requirements but that's but you still have to be clear about your risk capital allocation that is the most important thing okay so invested capital is required from a liquidity point of view in certain like certain markets like equities where you are like like you are required to buy 100% you have to put up essentially beyond the settlement you have to put up 100% of the equity uh, position of the equity okay in the US markets you can borrow 50% of the value and carry it forward okay so you have different invested capital requirements in different markets depending on what kind of uh, instrument you are trading but the risk capital thinking that does not change across any market okay so that is why risk capital is the more important entity right so that approach is not correct so still okay anything else and close it now